Well, I guess we can go ahead and get started. And go ahead and pray, guys. <clears throat> ah, dear Lord, we just thank you for this time that we can come together, or that we can be in your word, that we can discuss the things that you have penned down through uh, your your uh, disciple, Lord, or the things that you had said to him that he decided that it needed to be penned down. Uh, Lord, we just pray that you would speak to our hearts and minds, Lord, that your spirit would uh, just empower us to understand what you're saying, Lord, and to empower me to speak your uh, words faithfully and, and in truth, Lord. Uh, we just thank you for this time, Lord, that you would soften our hearts, Lord, that you would speak to us in ways that maybe you've never spoke to us before. Uh, Jesus, we praise you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Does anybody remember the last time I spoke? Because it's been like two weeks. <laughs> Probably. Well, we were talking about Matthew 24. We're kind of going through Matthew 24 and 25 and kind of a deeper dive into it since, well, a fair amount of the guys in here are pretty regular and I know are believers. But today we're going to do the same. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to also jump into Revelation at the same time. So we're going to do a couple, a little bit of crossover. It's all pertaining to the end times. It's Jesus explaining end times events and things that we're going to start to see or things that we may already be seeing. Uh, so in verse nine, we're going to start. Then they will hand you over to be persecuted, and they will kill you. They will. You will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away, betray one another, and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise, will rise up and deceive many. Because lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So in the first couple of verses, we, we just see that, you know, things are going to get weird at some point for believers, people who are following Jesus faithfully. We're going to see things get kind of tough for us, you know, because contrary to popular belief, we are here during the time of tribulation, the seven years of tribulation. Like, I know it's been widely taught that we are not here and that the rapture happens beforehand. I can prove that it doesn't because Jesus said it, but we're not there yet. When we get to that point, I'll make sure that it's really shown. But here we see that we're going to be hated. And the number one religion today that is the most hated in the entire world is Christianity. True Christianity, not all the other versions of Christianity that say they're Christian. But like true Christianity is the number one persecuted in the entire world because we have the truth and people don't like the truth. They want what is a lie. They want things that aren't true, right? Because they sound better. They're not challenging us to live a righteous life. You know, they're not challenging us to follow Jesus in a way that is contrary to what the world wants, contrary to what our flesh wants, right? Our flesh wants to sin. Our flesh wants to live for itself. It wants to jump from thing to thing to thing to thing that makes us feel good for that time, right? You know, sin, let's admit, is fun. We all know it because we've all been there. We all sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. And God is holy, right? He's the most holy being and he, he is just amazing. You know, and he calls us to live in such a way that we're going to be hated. Because we call out truth, right? We point out truth. We point out sin. We point out things in the world that just don't make sense. You know, they make sense in the flesh, but they do not make sense when it comes to stacking things up against the Word of God. So we're going to be hated. And we're going to see love amongst even fellow believers because, like I said, so many people call themselves believers, but they're not, right? Right? They have a form of godliness, but they are not godly. 
Now, that's what the that's what the Bible says that they have this form of belief, but you know this, the staggering thought is that the demons believe in Jesus, but they're not saved, right? They believe and shudder. And what do we do? People who don't follow Jesus say, well, I believe in Jesus, but they don't have this reverent fear. They don't have this fear that God can literally give you exactly what you wanted, which is separation from Him, which is eternal punishment in hell. Right? God doesn't send people to hell. You choose it. Right? Have you ever thought of it that way? That you actually choose to go there? And that it's very a very loving thing for God to just say, okay. It's crazy. It's very counterintuitive. But isn't that what a loving God would do? Give you exactly what you want in that way. All right. You don't want me? You don't have to have me. But without me, it's, it's punishment. And it's eternal. It never stops. And people think that's unfair. But it's not. Because an infinite, perfect, holy being cannot be in the presence of sin. You, like, think about this. If I were to go out to a junkyard and... Key, the, key a car in a junkyard. Is anybody going to care? Probably not. But it's a junkyard. Junkyard. It's a junk car. You know, but that's that's kind of what I'm, I'm going at. You know, if I were to go out in the parking lot and key a car, somebody's going to get mad. If I if I walk onto a Ferrari lot and I scratch that car, I'm probably getting put in jail. Because the value of the thing that I have just sinned against is far greater. So when we sin against God, it's far greater. Because God is infinite. God is perfect. God is holy righteous. God is holy, holy, holy. That means there is no sin, no change, no nothing like that within him. And when we sin against Him, it's a grievous thing. And so we point that out to the world. We try to show the world that, hey, sin is real. And if you don't get right with God through faith in Christ, you're destined to eternal torment. And that's why we'll be hated. That's why we are hated. You know, I can guarantee that there have been guys in this room that I have preached in front of and said, if you continue to sin, whether you call yourself a Christian or not, you're going to go to eternal torment. Because if you don't continue in faith, then you're not really following Jesus, right? Because really following Jesus is striving to be like him, living a righteous life. Turning from sin. That's what repentance is, right? It's turning from sin. But if you continue in sin, even though you say you're following Jesus, that's not really, you're not really following Jesus. You don't have the Holy Spirit, which is our seal for the day of redemption, which is the return of Christ. It's our guarantee. The Spirit is our guarantee of eternal life. But you can tell when somebody doesn't have the Spirit because they're not living a life that bears the fruit of the Spirit. You know, the fear, you know, fruit of the Spirit, peace, patience, kindness, love, gentleness, all those things. You know, those things are awesome. <laughs> you know, but the flesh is always opposite of that. Well, you can see the fruit, right? You can see if they're, if they're, turning from sin or if they're continuing in sin. That's how you can tell. 
You know, if if you say you're a believer, but you don't have any conviction over your sin, then I would challenge that belief. I would challenge calling yourself a believer. Now, you can honestly search. You can honestly be seeking after Jesus. But if there's no change, there's no heart change, there's no turning from sin, there's no repentance, then... I would, I would venture to say, I can't say it 100%, but I would venture to say, according to Scripture, that you are not a follower of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Can I say anything? I know I'm new here, but uh, on what you said, it also says that we are all saved by grace through faith. It's true, but it's said. That is true. However, it says you have to continue in the faith. Absolutely, you've got to exercise them every day. Oh, but and that's what I mean. If you're not, if you're not being convicted of your sin, then I would venture to say that you're not following Jesus because you're still continuing in your sin, disregarding the fact that you're supposed to repent, you know, and turn from your sin. It is so. But that's that's so. Yes, you are right. Also, you are right. We are saved by gra- by grace. We all we've all discussed that. But it's also that we have to know that that grace was once was freely given, but all throughout Scripture, we are told to endure in our faith. What up, buddy? I, I'm sorry. He says that the two commandments, love God the Father with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, that's the first of the commandments. The second is like you do the first. You love your neighbors, you love yourself. If you love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, you will follow the first four of the Ten Commandments. If you love your neighbors, you love yourself, you will adhere to the last six. You can't, you, you can't follow that line. It's not impossible. Well, it is and it isn't. But I mean, I'm sorry, I mean, no, it's okay. I mean, I, I don't mind having a dialogue at all. So, you know, but that's what I'm getting at is, you know, when it comes to all that stuff, that's the reason the world hates us. It's the reason the world hates believers because we're trying to live a life that is contrary to what the world wants. They want us to live for ourselves, right? You know, and and like I said before, there are just so many Christians who call themselves Christians, right? That are deceived into believing something that isn't true. You know, like the prosperity gospel or um, you know, any other kind of weird stuff you hear, you know, like I might step on a toe here, but like most, um, LDS believe they're Christian or Jehovah's witness or, um, a lot of Catholics, unfortunately, they're following a doctrine that just is not found in the Bible unless it's been added to you know, there's just so many false beliefs and false prophets and teachers out right now that are teaching things that are contrary to what the Bible has taught for thousands of years now. You know, we weren't given we weren't given we weren't we weren't given this book so we could ignore it. We were given it so we could understand the things that God wants us to understand. Were you going to ask a question? How do you know they didn't change the word? Uh, I don't know. The word does not change the word. I don't just say it's that right. The King James Version of the Bible is the true word of God. It is that. In John, he says, the word was, In the beginning was the word. The word was made flesh. The word was with God. The word was God. Every word in that book is the truth, absolute truth. And that is all life. And Jesus was the fulfillment of that word. He says, he was, The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That same man that dwelt among us 2,000 years ago, he dwelt among us now. He raised himself from the grave. He raised him 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 from the grave.
Definitely. You know, but I've, I've noticed when I truly needed something, I asked God. There's a reason why I'm needing, but I'm not asking Him for it. I'm just saying, hey, this is a need I need. Is there any way possible in your power to provide? Like today, I needed a quarter. Two minutes later, this is what it was provided. It is a quarter, but it was in the middle of the road. Mm. I mean, when you do hey, believe, God, yeah, we when know you God do, provides. Believe in him, he will provide you what you need, Amen. but it may not be exactly what you're asking. Well, and it may not be right now. Yes. He may say, well, you got to wait a little bit. Yeah, and it was two minutes later in the middle of the street. A quarter. Oh, look at this quarter. <coughs> Definitely beat up. <laughs> it's beat up. It's, still it's a quarter. It means something to me. It, I believe in him, and he provided what I need. <coughs> but it wasn't at that moment. <laughs> when like you're going through a tough situation and I just open up my Bible and it just tells me everything in there. Is that self Oh yeah. No. <clears throat> I say we kinda kinda went off on a different direction than I had planned. I mean no, it's okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's kind of that's that's the I mean that's the point. I mean, the spirit's the one leading this, not me. But that was my faith in Him. He still provides. Oh yeah. I mean, God, God provides. I mean, that doesn't mean He's going to give you every wish, every dream. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to you know. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to be able to pull a pull a Benny Hinn or a Kenneth Copeland and yeah. say, "I command money into yeah. my bank account and it happened," because yeah, it doesn't. That, that's not. That's not. God. God is not a. God is not a, God is not a genie. Exactly, but that was. It's. He can. He can. Like, could God choose to give you a thousand dollars today? Absolutely, he can. But. It's not in your best interest. Uh, sometimes it might be. Oh, that's, but God knows when. God knows when. He knows what you truly need and what you need and why you need. He knows I will keep this forever and try not to because of the way. Oh, yeah. You know, but I think, I think a lot of this kind of points to the love of God. Yes. You know, you. where when we contrast to the world, love is growing cold. Yeah. He gave his only love. That's right. You know, and I think I think verse thirteen is kind of a big one here for all of us that that I think we need to remember because of what I've been saying is that we need to endure through all this stuff, through all the hard times, through all the tribulation, because at that time the tribulation is going to be different than what we're experiencing as tribulation now. You know, right now is like trials and temptations and things that we're facing. At that time, that's going to be some hardcore. We're going to see a lot of stuff happening that we won't totally understand unless we understand what we're being told. You know, and if we're here to see it, at least we'll know what's happening. And that's the whole reason for Jesus telling the disciples this stuff, is so that they won't be surprised, that they won't be, they won't be confused. So we won't be confused. So we won't be lost. So we won't get get taken astray by false doctrine and false teachings and people saying that they're they're the Messiah when they're not. This is going to happen, right? Right? I told you guys before. There's this guy out in California who said he was the Messiah, and he looked like the Surfer Jesus. Yeah. I mean, you guys have all seen the Surfer Jesus picture, yeah. you know, the blonde hair, blue eye, frail skinned Surfer dude. I mean, let's all just admit Jesus was not white. Okay, put it out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he didn't. He didn't need a surfboard. He walked on it. He walked on that. 
or he commanded it to be steel. But Jesus says, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Right? You know, that's, Jesus is literally saying, hey, your salvation is contingent on your remaining faithful to me. <coughs> while our salvation, yes, in Christ, while we are in Christ, is secure, it's still conditional. He says that we're supposed to endure. Exactly. You know? You believe that there will be people left and human beings that will actually go move forward into this day of rest? And that's what we're approaching. We're approaching this day of rest, this Sabbath. That's what we're coming up to. I know. And you know, all the signs are starting to point in that direction. You know? We're supposed to pay attention to the things that Jesus said and the things that the prophets said. That this Bible tells us there's many prophecies in this book that point towards that time of the end coming. And we're supposed to be constantly on alert as believers. I see everybody looking around. It means I got four minutes. You know, I know we were going to go over to Revelation, but we'll do that next time. Um, so, no, no, it's okay. I mean, everything, everything fit together perfectly. So, I mean, <laughs> but right, that's the biggest part is the endurance of our faith. And if you don't have that faith, I feel sorry for you. Because there's nothing like it. Nothing else fills that, that hole. That hole can only be filled by God through Christ in faith that endures till the end. Till either you take your final breath or till Jesus returns. And if you're not, if you're not willing to do that, it's going to suck. It's going to suck. You know, but God sent His one and only Son, right? To die, to take on the wrath of God that is meant for us. We're the ones that should have been put on the cross and pay for our sin. Instead, Jesus took on that, took on that wrath. It was all poured out on Him. He nailed our sins to the cross, right? It's what, it's what we're told. Nailed our sin to the cross. He was put in a grave for three days. Why three days? Because that was when the body started to rot. And what did he do? He burst out of up to 75 pounds of grave covering and then walked out of the tomb. He walked out of the tomb. He defeated sin. He defeated Satan, which... He's still going to do again. <laughs> and then he defeated death. All the things that are against us, Jesus has already defeated. And he has said, we can have that victory if you will place your faith in me. Is there anybody in here that hasn't done that? And wants to? Well, that's awesome. I mean, either you're all believers or you're not ready, which is okay. God will work on your heart. You know, I'm not even upset that we didn't get to go the direction that I was hoping for, but this was way better. So thank you guys. Um, for anybody that isn't ready to make that commitment to Christ, just think about it. Let Him work on your heart. And... Uh, we're going to go ahead and pray one more time and then you guys can get in line and then I'm sure other people will try to file in right after you. So, dear Lord, I just thank you for the conversations that we got to have here. Lord, for your just speaking through um, your word and through uh, the different people here, Lord, having this awesome discussion. Lord, it just 
I know it built the faith of other people and, and it put seeds in the hearts of others who have yet to make a commitment to you, Lord. Lord, I pray that for those per- people that you would grow them, that you would soften their heart to you, Lord, Lord, that they would come to know you as their personal Lord and Savior. And Jesus, for all those who are in here who are following you, Lord, I pray that they would follow you to the very end and enduring in faith no matter what. So, Lord, we praise you. We thank you for this food that we're about to eat. And, Lord, just bless it to our bodies. And we thank you so much. In your name we pray. Amen.